I'm going to show you one of my favorite cakes. A lot of people request this from me. It's just a simple cinnamon ginger cake. Here are your ingredients, but don't worry, I'll include a link below with full nutrition information and details as usual. Let's begin by preheating our oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit or 160 degrees Celsius. You don't need a lot of equipment, a bowl, a spatula, a whisk, a 9 by 5 loaf pan, which is 23 by 13 centimeters. I like to line it with parchment paper. If it's not nonstick, you want to make sure you prep it with either spray or grease and flour it and a cooling rack. Okay, let's get started by putting three eggs or 150 grams into the bowl and then two thirds cup of oil, 160 milliliters. Add in some vanilla. You want about a teaspoon worth. You can add in two teaspoons if you like, five to 10 milliliters. Depends on how well you like vanilla and how much you want it to shine in there. I like to just do about a one teaspoon here. Mix it together until it's nice and combined, like this. Next, we're gonna add in our dry ingredients. You could sift them together in a larger bowl or just put them in together all at once. Three quarters of a cup of sugar, 150 grams. Two teaspoons of cinnamon, eight grams one teaspoon of ginger, which is two grams, one half teaspoon of salt, which is about two grams, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, which is six grams, and finally our flour, which is one and one third cups or 200 grams. And you're just gonna mix this until there are no more lumps and you don't see any more flour. If you need to, switch over to a spatula to stir it at the end, because it does become a little tough to stir. Again, we're going to put this into a prepared 9 by 5 pan. I like to use parchment paper because it's always easier to remove. If it's not nonstick, make sure to prepare it with some nonstick spray or grease and flour at first. Then just pour it into your pan. It's going to be a thick batter, so you may need to level it out onto the sides a little bit like this. And then you're going to bake it anywhere from 35 to 45 minutes or until it is separating from the pan and if you touch it, it will bounce back and you can also do the toothpick test where you put it in the middle and it comes out clean. Put it onto a cooling rack, let it sit five to 10 minutes before removing and then just lift it out of the pan and put it onto the cooling rack to completely cool. It'll take about an hour to completely cool, maybe two depending on how hot your kitchen is. After the cake has cooled, you're going to make a topping. I'm going to show you a chocolate glaze, which I think goes really well. But if you don't like chocolate, just use some vanilla in place of the chocolate. You're going to start out with one cup of powdered sugar. And to that, you're going to add in two tablespoons of cocoa powder. If you have a sifter, I highly recommend sifting them together. And if not, just stir it well until you don't see any more lumps. Add in between two to three tablespoons of milk, which is 30 to 45 milliliters, a tablespoon at a time, mixing very well, about 30 to 40 seconds in between until you get the desired consistency you like. I like to go until it is a ribbon form and it will look a lot like this. Get your cake that is completely cooled. If you put this on a warm cake, it's just gonna slide right off the top. So make sure your cake is cool and you're gonna just pour it on top and then spread it over. And if you like, say hi to Maggie, everybody. If you like, you can spread this out and let it drip over the edge to have a nice little pretty look to it. But if not, just spread it on the top until it is nicely well covered. It'll be nice and shiny. Let it sit 10 to 15 minutes before you cut it. It'll get a matte finish and it'll be easy to cut and store. Let's cut into this so you can see how absolutely delicious this cake is. It's one of my favorite ones to make and it's one of my favorite ones to give as a gift, especially during the holidays as it just reminds you of fall weather. Now, if you like, feel free to experiment with the spices, add in some allspice, add in some nutmeg, some cloves, whatever you like. It's absolutely a beautiful cake. I hope you enjoyed this recipe. Visit us at jacksonsjob.com for more and as always, happy baking.